Welcome to Discovering the Jewish Jesus with Rabbi Schneider. I'm your host, Dustin Roberts, and today we're continuing our study on the mysteries in the Gospel of John, diving into the concept of election and how Jesus is the bread of life. Have you ever wondered why some people are chosen by God for certain roles? Are they better suited for the job, or has God supernaturally selected them for the task? Well, journey along with Rabbi Schneider right now to discover the answers to these questions. And he'll also be giving us some insights on how we can embrace our chosen identity and live out our purpose as representatives of God's kingdom. Our message comes from the Gospel of John. And now, here is Rabbi Schneider. What we're doing, beloved ones, is we're going through the Gospel of John line by line. There are some sections we're, we're not focusing as much on, but I'm basically preaching through the entire Gospel of John. It's my favorite Gospel. You can't take away from any of the other Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are more historical Gospels, and they're called the Synoptic Gospels because Matthew, Mark, and Luke basically are all telling the same story. They're giving a historical retelling of the ministry of Jesus, the places he was, the things that he said, the things that he did, etc. John's Gospel does include some of those things, but John's Gospel moves more into the mystical realm. So John begins his gospel not by recounting Jesus' genealogy like Matthew and Luke did, rooting Jesus in history and in the earthly, but John's gospel begins in the unseen, mysterious realm. So John begins his book by saying, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. Nothing that's come into being has come into being apart from him. And so John is rooting Jesus in eternity. He was with God in the beginning and nothing that's come into being has come into being apart from him. And then John says in the 14th verse of that first uh, chapter, and the word became flesh. So John's gospel is rooted in mystery. Mysteries are truths that have been concealed that are now revealed. So John reveals mysteries to us. And in my previous episodes, we went through chapters one through six. Today in chapter six, once again, I'll be going over some of the same things that I went over in the last episode, but there's some additional insights that I wanna bring forth for us, beloved ones. And the truth is so rich, it deserves digesting again. In fact, Yeshua is going to tell us in John 6 that we need to eat his flesh and drink his blood to have life in ourselves. To the natural man, that sounds pretty repulsive. And that's how it sounded to many of those Pharisees that listened to him during the first century. But we're going to dig deeper into the mystery of what Yeshua, what Jesus was actually saying there. And more importantly, beloved, what that means for you and I right now. So I want to pick up today in John 6. Again, I'm recovering a few things, but we're going to look at some new angles here. We're going to start today in the 41st verse. So Yeshua is describing himself as the bread of life that's come down from heaven. They're having a hard time receiving what he's saying. We pick up now in the 41st verse. Therefore, the Jews, and by the way, when we see that word Jews in the Gospel of John, it's confusing because it sounds there like Jews are against Jesus from the Gospel of John. But the fact is, All Jesus' disciples were Jewish. The people that he was ministering to in the Gospels were Jewish. The first church was all Jewish. But when you read the Gospel of John, it sounds like the Jews are always against Jesus. But when John uses the word Jews in his Gospel, he's not talking about all Jewish people, but he's talking about the Jewish religious leaders the Pharisees and Sadducees in Judea. So it's a very specific group that John is referring to when he uses the word Jews here. Again, a lot of people have read John's gospel and they've come away anti-Semites because John paints Jews in a negative light. But let's not forget, John was Jewish. And in John's gospel, 
John records Jesus' words in John 4 when Jesus said to the woman at the well, we know what we worship for salvation is from the Jews. So in that particular case, Jesus is using the word Jews as the Jewish people. But John is using the word Jews as, once again, the Jewish religious leadership in Judea who were opposed to Jesus. So with that in mind, let's pick up once again verse number 41. Therefore the Jews were grumbling about him because he said, I am the bread that came down out of heaven. So notice the antagonism that's going on here. There's a conflict that's happening. Jesus versus the religious Jewish leaders living in Jerusalem and in Judea. They were saying, is not this Jesus? But they would have said Yeshua. They were saying, is not this Jesus, Yeshua, the son of Joseph or Yosef, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say, I've come down out of heaven? I mean, think about it. From their perspective, it would be like you had a family next door and you grew up next door to this family and you grew up with this kid, let's call the kid Robin, and you've known the kid since he's been three years old, and all of a sudden, Robin comes up to you one day, this kid you've grown up with your whole life, and he says to you, I've come down out of heaven. I mean, you would think he was Meshuggah, right? You'd think he's nuts. And this is kind of what they're dealing with here. This one that they had been familiar with, they knew his mom and dad, who's now saying he's the bread of life that came down out of heaven. So continuing on, they were saying, is not this Jesus, Yeshua? the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know, how does he now say, I have come down out of heaven? Yeshua answered and said to them, do not grumble among yourselves. I really like this because they're setting themselves up as being over Yeshua, looking down on him, and Jesus flips the whole thing upside down. He says, don't grumble among yourself because you guys don't know what you're talking about. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. In other words, Jesus is saying, don't think that you can judge me. Don't grumble among yourselves, thinking you're looking down on me, analyzing me. The truth is, no one sees who I am, knows who I am, and comes to me unless he's chosen by the Father, unless the Father draws him. So Yeshua flips the whole thing upside down. It's no longer them judging him. It's him as superior coming down from God, revealing to them that unless God has chosen you, you're not gonna come to me. Jesus continues on. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him and I'll raise him up on the last day. Now I want you to listen again. I'm gonna read this verse more slowly. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him and I'll raise him up on the last day. Now consider that statement, that scriptural fact that I just read and compare what we just read with the theology of many, including you, perhaps. Many of us think that we chose Jesus. We think it was us that chose to come to Jesus. But that's not what Jesus taught. Jesus said, you did not choose me in John's gospel, but I chose you. And here he tells us, no one can come to me unless the Father draws him. So it wasn't you and your will that brought you to Jesus. It was the Father that drew you to Jesus. And if you and I surrender to this truth, Surrender to the fact that it wasn't us that chose God, but that God chose us. It wasn't you and I that first initiated coming to him, but it was rather the Father drawing us to him. If we'll surrender to that, our whole experience of who God is will be elevated to a whole new level because we'll begin to recognize it's not something that we can control. We surrender to the sovereignty of God and there's power in that. Tremendous power. You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus, and Rabbi will be right back, so please keep listening. Did you know that you can connect with Rabbi right on your phone? The Rabbi Schneider app is packed with resources, videos, and a daily devotional that are designed to help jumpstart your day. 
The Rabbi Schneider app is free, bringing you inspiration and encouragement 24 hours a day and seven days a week. Simply search for Rabbi Schneider in your phone's app store and download the app today. We are so thankful for everyone who gives a financial gift of support to this ministry. And perhaps today is the day that you decide that you would like to deepen your commitment to discovering the Jewish Jesus. The best way to do that is to sign up to become a monthly partner at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. Or you can call us at 800-777-7835. Together, we can help others prepare for Jesus' return. And now let's get back into the second half of today's message. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught of God. Now notice this next statement. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Now, this is important to understand that the revelation that brought you into a relationship with your Savior was revelation that was specifically given to you as a gift from the Father. In other words, why, beloved one, do you believe in Yeshua? Do you believe in Jesus? Yet you know many people that don't. Why do you believe and others that you know do not? You know what the difference is? You were given revelation from the Father that they were not given. Jesus said, all the Father gives me will come to me. And he that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Jesus just got done saying, no one comes to me unless the Father draws him. And notice what he said in the verse that we just read. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught of God. Get this now. Everyone, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Remember when Yeshua said to Peter, who do they say that I am? And Peter said, well, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah. And then Yeshua said to Peter, who do you say that I am? And Peter replied, you're the Christ, the anointed one, the son of God. You know what Yeshua's response to Peter was? Blessed art thou, Simon, son of John, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. In other words, the revelation that Peter had to know that Jesus was the Christ or the Messiah, that revelation that he had was a special, supernatural insight and gift that the Father had given him. So Jesus said, Blessed art thou, Simon, son of John, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. That's the same thing that Jesus is saying right here. Everyone who hears and learns from the Father comes to him. I want you to grasp the fact that you're chosen. I want you to grasp the fact that you are where you are in relationship with Jesus because the Father drew you, gave you revelation, and chose you, according to the book of Ephesians, before the foundation of the world. When you know that the reason that you believe is because God gave you a gift to believe, when you know you believe because he gave you revelation that the rest of the world doesn't have, those that don't believe in him, when you know that, listen, you'll know who you are and you'll know why you're here on earth. You'll know that your purpose in life is single fold. When you know you're chosen, that you're elect, then you'll understand who you are. You'll know you're a priest on the earth. We're a kingdom of priests, the Lord says. What do priests do? Priests are chosen to draw near to God. I'm going back to the Levitical priesthood. How did they function? Because the New Testament tells us those of us that are chosen, those of us whom the Father have brought to Jesus, those of us that believe in him and have made him our Lord, the scripture says we're a kingdom of priests. When you know the Father chose you, then you'll receive the fact that the Lord says you're a priest. Then you ask yourself, well, what does a priest do? If I'm a priest, what does that mean? Well, we learn what a priest does through the Hebrew scriptures. What do priests do? Three things. Number one, the priests were chosen to draw near to the divine presence. The priests were chosen, beloved ones, to come near to God, right? They came to the tabernacle where the Lord's presence dwelt. So the first thing that you're chosen for is to know God. 
Why did the Father bring you to Jesus? That you would know him. Jesus said, this is eternal life, to know the Father and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. You've been brought to Jesus, number one, that you would know God. That's what eternal life is, to draw near. Number two, the priesthood in the Hebrew scriptures, they offered up sacrifices. They served in the tabernacle by offering up sacrifices. So what does that mean for you and me? We're chosen to know God, to draw near to him. Secondly, we're chosen, beloved ones, to offer up ourselves to him. Our gifts, our talents, our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our dreams. We're called to offer ourselves up to him as a living sacrifice. So we need to stop looking to the world for identity. We need to stop running after the world to try to find purpose and meaning. We need to stop looking to the world to find out what they think and then compromising or being conformed to the world. And instead, what we need to realize is that we've been called, listen, to offer ourselves up to our maker as a living sacrifice that we're alive to him alone. Paul said, He had been crucified to the world and the world was crucified to him. Paul was separate from the world. He was a living sacrifice to the Lord. Paul's will then encourage us, therefore offer yourself up as a living sacrifice. So you're a priest chosen to draw near to know God. Number two, chosen to offer yourself up to God as a living sacrifice and as a spokesman for him on the planet. And then the third thing that the priest did in the Hebrew Bible, they, listen, they blessed the people. The priests were chosen to draw near, to offer up sacrifices, and to bless the people. You're in the earth, beloved ones, to be a blessing, to bring God's goodness into the earth through your compassion, through your deeds, through showing love and kindness, and also by speaking the truth even sometimes when it confronts, even as Jesus is doing here to the Pharisees in the Gospel of John chapter six. Let's continue on. Jesus says in verse number 46 here, not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God, he has seen the Father. Of course, Yeshua is referring to himself there. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your father, Yeshua is saying to the Jews that were there, your fathers, those that came out of Egypt with Moses, your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. All those Israelites that came out of Egypt, they eventually died. They ate that manna, but they died. That supernatural manna that came from heaven. But Jesus said, I'm the living bread. He that eats of me will live forever. Then he speaks in verse number 50, this is the bread, referring to himself, which comes down out of heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down out of heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread also which I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Now, I don't know how old you are today, but what I'm speaking right now resonates more strongly with some of you than others because some of you are more acquainted with the reality of death. Many of us, when we were younger and teenagers or 20s, we didn't think much about death. It seemed far away. But as we've gotten older and we've experienced more of our family and loved ones and friends passing away and dying, now death is much closer. Jesus is saying, if you eat and receive me, you will have eternal life and you will never taste death. Of course, he's referring to spiritual death at this point. Even though the body passes away, the soul lives on forever because it's carried and empowered and filled with the life of the Ruach or the breath of God. Then the Jews began to argue with one another saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, you have no life in yourself. This is Discovering the Jewish Jesus, and I hope that Rabbi Schneider's exploration of the mysteries of the Gospel of John has left you feeling curious and encouraged about your identity and place in God's kingdom. You know, as ambassadors of the Father, 
Our divine calling is to share the gospel with everyone across the world so that all will hear. And we'd love for you to join with us in this sacred mission. Rabbi's teaching style, it's not only dynamic, it's brimming with passion as he illuminates the timeless truths of both the Old and New Testaments. It's our belief that these messages are not just informative, they're transformative, and together we can impact the world around us. So become part of something big this year and join with us in taking the good news to the ends of the earth, where inspiration, revelation, and a healthy dose of encouragement is so needed. Rabbi? Building on what Dustin was saying, not only are thousands of people getting saved through this ministry, but oftentimes when I travel around the world, the Lord will open up doors for me to minister to political leaders and people in high places. I want you to know, when you send me through television and on the ground crusades, there's fruit that's being won for the kingdom of God, and you that are supporting me, beloved, are having a part to play. You're gonna have a reward for all this fruit that's being wrought through this ministry. You see, beloved, Paul said, how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall the preacher go unless somebody sends them? You're the ones that are sending me and together, beloved, we're gonna be rewarded. I wanna encourage you right now, if the Lord is speaking to your heart about supporting me and supporting this ministry, just be obedient to him and you're gonna be blessed. To give a gift of any amount right now, go to discoveringthejewishjesus.com or connect with one of our friendly team members who will be happy to take your call and donation over the phone. The number to dial is 800-777-7835. And you can also send a financial gift in the mail to Discovering the Jewish Jesus, P.O. Box 777, Blissfield, Michigan, 49228. And we'll say thank you by sending you Rabbi Schneider's message of the month. And it's also available as a digital download. And we'll make sure that you receive a copy of our latest newsletter. And this newsletter has all the most recent news and updates, along with several extra teaching points from Rabbi. For those who already receive our newsletter, you'll know that this month's was focused on Passover, which begins next week. And this special set-apart season begins sunset on April the 22nd, and it ends at nightfall on April the 30th. And as the Jewish people prepare for this time, I want to remind you that there's a common history between Easter, which we celebrated last month, and Passover. And you can learn more about this and the ways they connect by visiting discoveringthejewishjesus.com. And well, no program would be complete without hearing the ironic blessing. I pray that these inspiring words, they comfort you today. Here's Rabbi. Blessings trump curses. And in the book of Numbers chapter 6, we find the ironic blessing that God commanded Moses' brother Aaron, the high priest, to speak over the children of Israel. There's power in blessing, beloved ones. So take part in receiving Father's blessing upon your life today. Yahweh, 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 Vihunecha Isa Yahweh Penavelecha Veasem Lecha Shalom Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift you up with his countenance and the Lord give you, beloved one, his peace. God bless you and shalom. Let our prayer team pray for you. We lift up every individual request before the Lord. Submit your prayer request or testimony at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. That's discoveringthejewishjesus.com. You can also connect with us on your social media outlets to stay up to date on the content you love. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe on YouTube. Connecting with Discovering the Jewish Jesus has never been easier. 
Discovering the Jewish Jesus is a production of Shalom Ministries, and I'm your host, Dustin Roberts. Be sure to join us tomorrow when Rabbi Schneider continues this study from the Gospel of John. That's Wednesday on Discovering the Jewish Jesus.